Welcome to the Music Retail Show. Fun, engaging, educational conversations for the musical instrument community. The Music Retail Show is brought to you by MIRC LLC, providing solutions for the musical instrument community by being a reliable source for diverse music products. If you need inventory for your music store, pawn shop, or e-commerce site, go to MIRCweb.com to find out more. All right, we're day two, Summer NAM Show 2021, and now we're sitting here with Evan Vallis with LPD Music, and uh, Evan, I had the pleasure of meeting you for the first time yesterday. Yep. Uh, great to meet you, man. Yep. You as well, you as well. Appreciate you having us on the show. Yeah, yeah, we actually got to hang out a little bit last night, yep. so it was, uh, you know, uh, it was nice weather last night. It was 90 degrees out here in Nashville, Tennessee yesterday, but the evening felt the even felt a lot better. So. Perfect, absolutely perfect. So anyways, where'd you where you uh, got to find out? Where'd you guys go? You said you went and got some barbecue. Where'd you Where'd you go get dinner? We went to Martin's, uh, just a, a oh, okay. little bit away from where we were at. Waited in line for an hour, but that was well worth it. Because it, it was slammed, huh? Oh yeah, it was slammed, but the food was fantastic. Yeah, there's actually a Martin's down by where actually where Ian and I live. So okay, it's uh it's really good. I'm not sure. I think they got four or five locations now but uh but good barbecue man it's kind of interesting when people come into town everybody has their own opinion of what's the best barbecue right so but uh i think i, I think i'm landing on the opinion that they all taste great yes uh, yes so anyway very good so how's uh evan how's the show going for you show's going good thank you um really just reconnecting with a lot of customers that I don't think I've ever put a face to a name with, you know, deal with them through, you know, my salespeople, but I don't think I've ever actually met them personally. Okay. So it's nice to put some face to names with vendors, different customers that you haven't met personally yet. And uh, yeah. it's been a good show so far. Yeah, I think it's been a great show. Um, you know, it's no secret that it's a little scaled back just yes. because I think everybody was deciding whether they were coming or not right. coming. but. Uh, man, the people that are here, I think, are the attitude is great. I yes. think everybody's using this as a, a great excuse to hang out and talk, catch up, and and, and uh, it feels like it's been wonderful. Yes. So no, absolutely. I think that the the morale of the industry is very high right now, and I think everyone here is just having a great time. Happy to be at a trade show. Happy to be able to shake some hands and, and meet people in person. And yeah, uh, very good thing for the industry. And I think Anaheim will be be a great show in the winter. So yeah, that's right. That's right. So uh, ho ho you know, hopefully we'll be out there with you as well. But. Yep. Um, um, so I, I want to know a little bit more about your company. Yeah. So LPD Music, I mean, you guys uh, are, from what I understand, third generation owned. So yep. uh, uh, tell us a little bit about your company. Okay. Yeah. So LPD, we were founded in 1963, uh, based out of Detroit. We're a full line distributor. So we sell a little bit of everything, whether it be pro audio, band and orchestra, guitar and guitar accessories. Um, we're the exclusive distributor of Dan Electro guitars in the United States, exclusive distributor of Aria and Aria Pro 2 guitars. Mm -hmm. And we also have some proprietary lines. Um, we have a, a line of mariachi instruments called Paracho Elite. Yes. That we import from Mexico. Uh, very, very good line for us. We've had it for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, the family background, my grandfather founded the company in 63, uh -huh. and the whole idea of it is he went to Mexico on a trip and bought bongos of all things and came back to the States, realized that no one was really selling bongos to retailers okay. in the States, and right. there was an opportunity. And then fast forward, my dad's an amazing musician, great guitarist. He came on board. We started bringing in guitar lines, and uh, the full line thing just happened, and the rest was history. So Yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, so, here we are, 2021. Yeah, well, and some of the brands that you carry are uh, extremely well-known. Yes. I mean, Dan Electro, well-known yep. brand. Um um, tell me a little bit more about what you guys do with them and, and how that's going. Yeah, so Dan Electro has just been a, a very amazing line for us. Um, a lot of people have had a misperception due to the beginning of the Dan Electro you know, revival in the early 2000s. A lot of people have a misperception that it's a cheap you know, Chinese instrument, so on and so forth. But the fact of the matter is, is the quality control on these things is impeccable. Um, we manufacture them all in Korea now. So okay. the same factory that a number of you know, very large brand names are being made at, they're who produce Dan Electro. So 
the line itself has been very innovative in the last few years. Mm -hmm. um, the whole idea with Dan Electro is to give you that retro flair, but to bring in some aspects that other manufacturers aren't really doing. So our baritones, for example, we sell just tons and tons of baritone guitars. Yeah. Uh, and it, it seems like the baritone is is maybe even what like when people talk about Dan Electro, yep. the, the baritone comes up in conversation first, from what I can see. So. Absolutely, absolutely. So, and a lot of it, you said, very innovative. Are you guys trying to hold some of that vintage style Dan Electro, but also it's trying to pave new ground with new models? Absolutely. So okay. with Dan Electro, I mean, your your main lines will always be your Longhorn bass. Or I'm sorry, your main pieces will always be your Longhorn bass, your you know D59, your Stock 59s. Those are always the mainstay yeah. Dan Electro guitars. But the baritones, the 12 strings, we have different versions of 12 strings now to meet different price points. Um, so, I mean, really, it's been a great line for us. And Phoebe Bridgers broke that Dan Electro baritone on SNL, I don't know, 60 days ago. And that just, it all blew up. Reverb, it did it really? Yeah, uh, Reverb wrote a great article on Dan Electro. Okay. The rest was history. So it was really cool. Yeah, man, very cool. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Dan Electro is, is one of those brands, I think. And I was looking at that sitar. My goodness, man. Yes. That thing, yes. uh, that thing's like, it looks like it'll do all kinds of things. It's one of those things you just have to hand it to somebody and say, what would you play with this? And yeah. then someone, they, they'll mess with it for three seconds. And then before you know it, they've been on with the piece for 45 minutes just messing around yeah, with messing it. Yeah, messing around. So it's a cool it, thing to have in the arsenal. Yeah, okay, yeah, very cool, very cool. But, yeah, I'm also very cu uh, 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 curious on the Aria. In the Aria Pro 2 lines. Yes. So, uh, yeah, tell me a little about those. I mean, that's also been a, a, a line of guitars that's been around for a long time. Yes. Yeah, so, Aria Pro 2, uh, for a lack of better terms, their distribution in the United States in the last, I don't know, two decades, w just for whatever reason, it wasn't really working. Um, we took on the line four years ago, uh -huh. and, it, you know... When people think Aria, they're going back to the 80s, they're going back to Cliff Burton, they're going back to Duran Duran with the SB-1000. Cliff Burton played an Aria. He did. He had okay. an SB-1000. Okay. Uh, you look up any YouTube video of Cliff Burton Aria, and he just goes nuts on them. So, okay. Uh, Aria actually did a tribute model probably 10 years ago. Okay. And it was a Cliff Burton tribute. His father was at Winter Nam, and they went ahead and did the unveiling, and a really cool piece looked just like the one that he played. I so. didn't even realize that Kurt Cobain played one either. Yeah. Yep. I thought uh, I thought that uh, lefty fender he always played was kind of like his staple piece, but man, that's cool, man. Yep. yep. And the SB1000, the funny thing with that specific bass is there is just a crazy following. I mean, you go on Facebook and there's a group for SB1000 owners and it has you know 10, 15,000 plus members. I mean, people absolutely love these instruments. Kind of a cult following, almost. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, but but that line has been great for us. I mean. The cool thing with Aria Pro 2 and what is really setting it apart in 2021 is you have a line that people forgot about, for a lack of better terms. I mean, it just it, it wasn't real prevalent in the industry. People yeah. forgot about it. Um, and we first started bringing it back at just a scale of, you know, your, your P bases, your Strat copies, so on and so forth. But since that we've had the line for a few years now, built a relationship with the manufacturer, and now we're coming out with a lot of really cool product that meets insane price points. Um, we have a new guitar coming out. It's the Aria Jet B-Tone, and it's going to be the lowest matte baritone on the market. Really? Um, really cool thing about that is... For okay, a, I'm looking at it right now. My goodness, that looks cool. It's got the humbucker and the single up in the neck. Yep, yep. Uh, Guitar Interactive did a whole review on it. So, I mean, any dealer that's interested in getting an inexpensive baritone in there, check it out on YouTube. I mean, they're, the, the guitar is extremely well made. Bar baritones are such a freaking cool instrument. Yes. So I know a lot of people, maybe a lot of people might try to do them, but man, I think uh, it, it's just such an interesting instrument, man. I think, uh, and this looks great. So it comes in the two different colors. Yep. So, hmm. Yeah, we're excited about it. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. So, um, and then, man, yeah, hey, you got a, a, a 615. Yep. Uh, man, Nashville's got that kind of Nashville telly setup. Yes. Man, I'm a sucker for that, too. Yeah, and the, the tribute models we're coming out with, I mean, the, the 615 GH, the GH, George Harrison, it looks just like the one that he was oh, okay. playing. Uh, we just have a ton of tribute models coming out. We did a, a Peter Frampton, a PF, but that's what, it, Peter Frampton, it was a, an LP copy. LP, okay, um, but, shape of three humbuckers on it. Yep. In fact, I actually, yeah, I saw a picture of it there for a second. It was flashing across, so that looked great. Yeah. Yeah, great instrument. Uh, so they're really just going back and 
forth with different tribute models, trying to stay innovative, trying to stay ahead of the curve, and uh, really just make themselves a big presence in the United States market again, and we're here to support it. So it's been yeah. a, a great, great line for us. Yeah, very cool. And then, um, obviously, um, let me see here. Yeah, and then the Aria line as well. Yes. Or the Aria Acoustic line. Yep. Okay. Yep. So th they're doing the same thing. I mean, there's some some pieces that they're coming out with that, you know, beyond just your orchestra size, your dreadnought, your parlor size. Uh, we have something called the Lil Aria now, and it's for, you know, very, very comparable size-wise to... Um, say like the baby Taylor in terms of just the overall size of it and it fits a certain market but it's been a real cool guitar for us yeah so. man and some of the acoustics on here man I love the colors like the the different stains yes so um and they look great so but uh the uh Paracho Elite yes um that uh, uh how how is that done for you is that something that's just been growing and growing over the years for you or yeah. obviously uh Mariachi instruments was was how it all started with your grandfather. Correct. Yeah, or it was bongos, but uh, but still yeah. that Latin market. That Latin market. That's yep. right. So so the Paracho Elite line, we import those from Paracho, Mexico. So the the brand name is exactly what they are. They're manufactured in the hills of Paracho. We bring them in. Um, we have we've expanded that line tremendously in the last uh, five years with just a number of different bajo quintos, bajo sextos, something for everybody. But it, we went out and made a Cuban Trace, we've made the Havana, we've made T-Plays, I mean, we just have so many different just off-the-wall mariachi instruments now that there's something for everyone. Yeah. Um, the Mariachi Divas, who have won a handful of Latin Grammys, a very good group, we endorsed them a few years back, okay. so if you see us at Winter Nam, we always had the Divas over with playing some parachos, so it's been a very, very good line for us as well. Yeah, okay, very cool. Um, yeah, so uh, man, I'm kind of curious. I gotta always gotta ask this question with everybody. But um, um, did you see? Obviously, last year happened. Everybody knows last year happened. Right. So, did you guys see the same kind of uh, uptick with musical instruments? Uh, obviously, everybody freaked out and thought, "My gosh, what are we gonna do?" And then right. by middle of summer, everybody's going, "Okay, crap, what are we gonna do? We need more guitars." We have no inventory. So, right. <laughs> we have no inventory. Yeah. How did you guys? How did you guys deal with everything? Well, you know, it, it presented a unique opportunity for us. I mean, um, we obviously, like everybody else, ran out of ran out of instruments. Right? It is what it was, and we had guitars coming in, but couldn't get accurate ETAs because of all the ports being clogged up, so on and so forth. But um, how we navigated that situation is a little backside history of um, LPD is we do a lot of importing. So for 60 years of importing, importing everything too, right? So importing our own proprietary guitar lines, importing um, accordions, importing, importing brass instruments. I mean, we just did so much importing over the years that a lot of that's B stock or secondary inventory we don't want to necessarily say it was neglected, but it wasn't. There was an intention on it, right? Yeah. So we had an abundance of it in our warehouse, and that presented us an opportunity to, you know, align where we want to be for the year. But let's move this product. There's product yeah. shortages. Let's give customers a really good deal that are going to give end users really good deals. I see. Yeah. And able to connect with the guys from MIRC, and that was a blessing because we were able to move. Man, some those guys are well. wonderful people. Great people. Man. Let me tell you, I mean, fantastic like, people. We could. T let's. We should talk about them for ten or fifteen minutes. <laughs> 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 no, but no, but, but I see what you did. You guys, you guys already had uh, high levels of stock to when all of that came down. So yeah. it's like you guys were like, oh, we we we've got stuff to sell. We right. might just need to sell stuff that didn't move as quick. Right. So I see. Okay. Yeah, it pr presented an opportunity. I don't want to say. Uh, obviously, nothing that happened last year would you want to say is a good thing, right? Yeah. Not by any means, but just in specific to our business, it presented us with an opportunity to move some distressed stock. Yeah, and, sure. Uh, give the dealer a good deal and, and move on and bring in new inventory. So that's really a way that we navigated that to kind of clean out the warehouse per se. Yeah. Okay. And and obviously, did that create any new trends? You know, with what you guys do. I mean, are you guys? You know, seeing a lot of uh, a lot of your dealers are selling your products online or more in stores. Uh, what are some things that kind of came out of last year coming into this year? A lot of it. So we were sitting uh, not to not to trickle back to the Aria thing, but we were sitting on pretty heavy Aria inventory. Yeah. We received a container right before everything shut down. And um, the beauty of Aria, as it stands right now, is it's a line that your major major online retailers don't have. So for a brick and mortar dealer, they're getting this this line that, you know, oh wow, 
you know, this this line I haven't seen in years. Yeah. Right? End users are going to come in and say, oh, I used to have one of those in 1982. The margins on them are great. There's freight incentives, so on and so forth. But to your point, a lot of ARIA got expanded through the pandemic. Okay. Simple laws of supply and demand. People yeah, needed sure. guitars, but then they got them and they put their hands on them. They're like, whoa. And market share yes, grew. Yes, exactly. So a lot of dealers have just been fascinated with the line now, always asking us what's new, what's innovative. Um, so in terms of dealer trends, I would say, to your point, e-commerce is obviously huge, but getting the ARIA name out there, naturally, just because of everything that was yeah. going on, it really expanded the line. So it was interesting opportunity it, for us. It is a great brand. I'm telling you, we, we saw a few pieces of the ARIA Pro 2s and got to put our hands on them, and they're, they're wonderful instruments. Yes. And in fact, any of our dealers that mm-hmm. saw that, they were excited to they because it is uh you know it's a name that people recognize so um you know and i think too to to prove your point you know when just being able to provide people electrics or even just guitars in general when everybody was looking for something right it it was it was very easy to get those you know so i can see why it'd be easy to expand that market share for for you guys no absolutely absolutely Yeah, so very cool. So you guys are seeing a lot more business in that area, uh, obviously coming into this summer NAM. Yes, yes. And, uh, you know, being a full line distributor, there was, you know, a handful of years where we were so, you know, so ready to roll with Dan Electro and push Dan Electro and push Aria that my sales team, great guys, but they got real excited about Dan Electro and Aria that some of the full line aspect of it may have not been, you know, top priority. So. You know, again, simple laws of supply and demand. Suppliers yep. don't have things. All of a sudden, we have customers who haven't placed accessory POs with us in a while calling. And it's just it gave us an opportunity to reconnect a lot of those relationships that may have fallen by the wayside in the yeah. years past. So. I, I can imagine for you, Dane Electro has always been a brand that you've just never had. It's never been a, a struggle to sell it. Correct. You probably just have people lined up going, oh, yeah. I'll take whatever I can get all, all the time. So, you know, it's just such a... It's just a, such a household name, so yes. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I've always wanted a baritone, but now I don't know if I need to get the uh, a Dan Electro baritone or if I need to get an Aria <laughs> Pro. The uh, uh, what was it called the, again? The Jet. The Jet. Yes. The Jet. That actually looks pretty darn cool. So, uh, a baritone, something that's always. Uh, needed to be added to my collection of guitars. And you don't have one at all? I don't have one at all. All right. right I'll remember right. that. And in fact, actually, the conversation in my head, sometimes I wonder if I want an acoustic baritone guitar. Uh, so, but then when you play the electric, you play an electric baritone through an amp, there's just some, there's something about it. So does, does Ariel Poston play a, a baritone? Yeah. And man, he's, uh, he's an artist from uh, Canada, that uh, smoking guitar player that you kind of listen to him play that, and you're just kind of like, uh, "Gosh, okay, I kind of, I kind of, kind of need to have one." So, right. but anyways, I think the jet looks wonderful. Well, we'll get one to you, one so, way or another. Yeah, okay, we'll great, get, we'll man. Get one woo-hoo. To you. Uh, but um, so, how how are you think things are going? I mean, uh, you know, last year and into this year is obviously things have changed. Supply chains are are, are disturbed. Uh, you know, lots of people are selling guitars online. Things are people mind shifts are changing. Where do you see? the next year going? Do you think people are going to buy guitars at this level forever? I Obviously what goes up must come down at some point, but yeah. I don't think um, I don't think that it's going to be something that happens overnight. And mm-hmm. I believe that, you know, this has striked a music renaissance, right? There's, there's people that were sitting at home. I mean, yeah. we, I'm sure you've had other conversations about it, but people sitting at home have nothing to do. Let's pick up an instrument. Let's certainly play. So <clears throat> let's just do basic numbers, right? And if, if half of those people stick to it that's still a huge population that wasn't even involved with the mi industry at all so do i think it's going to be as crazy crazy as it has been the last 12 24 months maybe not but do i think that this is definitely you know created a lot more demand for our industry absolutely so um i think that we have a lot of good years ahead of us i think that this has been you know, obviously not a good thing. That's not what you want to call everything that took place in 2020. Yeah. In 2020. Nothing about it was good, obviously. Sure. But in terms of your question, the MI industry and the, this guitar renaissance, I don't think it's going to slow down anytime soon. Yeah, I don't think so either. In fact, I was talking to somebody uh, just two days ago that that the the ripple effect, even if people didn't buy as guitars as much, mm. but uh, the amount of people that did buy guitars that now go, oh, I play guitar now, I have fun, they're gonna buy 
all the accessories. Right. They're going to buy an amp. They're going to buy pedals. They're going to buy new cables. They're going to buy cases. They're going to, you know, they thought, wow, I really like this. Now right. they know that they go, hey, I love my guitar, but I also want a different sound. So they buy that guitar. Right. And like you're saying, the amount of people in the market that are doing that now, right. even if some fall off, half of them fall off. Right. There's so many other musicians that are now in, uh, in the market that it seems like it can it can last for a while uh, for multiple categories within the MI industry. Oh, absolutely. And I, I have a, a really good buddy from college that him and I were having a conversation earlier in the year because he reached out just asking about some strings. I yeah. was like, oh, you play guitar. And he's like, oh, I picked it up six months ago. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Oh, well, cool, man. And he's like, I'll tell you what, just staring at a screen all the time and then going home and sitting on my couch and staring at my phone all the time, I realized that I need something to do to like yeah. exercise my brain, mm -hmm. right? So he's loves his guitars now. Yeah, I got to stop being such a loser. <laughs> yes, exactly. So, I need to do something with my life. <laughs> right. So I think a lot of people, even if they're not going to take their, their music journey super serious, mm. it's something that they enjoy doing. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if their end game is just to be able to go out by a bonfire five years from now with their wife and kids and play a song, if yes. that's their end game, that's great because that's still somebody that's buying strings, buying a capo here and there, buying slides. So I think that, you know, the business is in, in good shape. It's just I don't yeah. think we're running any issues. Yeah, man, I, I think you're. I think you're absolutely right. So, what are some things about the company that uh, that maybe we just haven't touched on right now that you'd want to talk about? So, um, I guess to talking about just dealer success and what we've seen, and I'm sure others have mentioned it too. But the dealers that are going out and buying the things that most people aren't buying or looking for that weird guitar that they only made 10 of or they only made 12 of those dealers are doing really well right now and um not to go back to aria because i've said aria a hundred no, times that's, that's already, great but, no, that's great um the sb1000 which right now i'm having production issues so it's not like i'm going to have a hundred in my warehouse ready to go mm -hmm. but i have a customer out of new york and uh, he only only sells high-end guitars he has one line that isn't necessarily high-end quote unquote it's Dan Electro. So that's how we got connected. Okay. Um, had a conversation with him one day and said, hey, you know, Jesse, I have these amazing Aria basses. And he happened to be a bassist, got super interested in it. Long story short, every single one I have from Japan that comes in, he's selling right away. Great margin. And I guess point being is that dealers that maybe step away from your standard brands that everybody carries under the sun and not saying to, to, to lead that line, right? Of course, sure. people are going to come in your store and ask for that product. Absolutely. But be more open to the off the wall products that everyone else doesn't have. And that's really what a lot of our dealers have found a lot of success, success with is just finding these guitars that nobody else has or yes. maybe no one's talking about and making people talk about them. So Yeah, and you do actually, uh, looking at this, you guys actually do carry a lot of other brands like Crestwood. Yep. Um, I'm familiar with the Crestwoods as far as like acoustic basses. Yep. You know, the great affordable acoustic basses. Yep. Uh, so some of, the other, some of the other brands that you guys have in here, uh, talk about those just a little bit too. Yeah, so one line that I bring it attention to um, right on guitar straps so right on straps they're manufactured in Spain they are really high-end leather strap but they're actually a hundred percent vegan so oh, okay. they just have crazy innovative features and actually I can show you one to get into this conversation I'll describe it with audio. Let me describe it. Oh man, with audio. it's nice. It's got uh, it's white with kind of like a light uh, Daphne blue almost kind of yes. or turquoise kind of with yeah, with so a little bit of red uh, red tones on the. Oh, those are picks. So oh, my gosh. Pick you put picks in the pick strap. holders. See, that's my favorite reaction okay. right there. People yeah. are like, oh, a strap. Cool, man. Oh, sweet. That's got pick holders. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's the retro series. Yes. Yeah, which obviously that turquoise brings it way into that. So, yeah, so another I think thing I used to have a belt like that. No, I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> no, but um, um, that's pretty, that, man, that's pretty cool. So Yeah, they've been a great line for us. And the dealers that have brought them on, again, going back to the kind of expanding your horizons, bringing things in that not everybody else has. Yeah. Um, I have dealers that have brought this in and there's not a lot of other dealers for it in the country right now because it's a fairly new brand yeah. and they're doing really well with it. And another thing we'll describe by audio is this adjustment system. Uh, okay. There's no slack. You pop these two screws out, you just slide it in place, set it and forget it and you never got to worry about adjusting your strap again. So that's, man, very cool. that's a patented right on thing. So um, Right on, man. Right on. <laughs> 
but yeah, that is a strap line that's just been fantastic okay. for us. And yeah, what about, uh, there's some other ones in here like Blues uh, Bayou and, and Axtron. Um, yep. So th those are all proprietary brands that we import in. So okay. um, Amp Brands, Blues Bayou's, our harmonicas. Uh, okay. We, we have our Latin Groove, Latin, Bongos, yeah. Congos, so on and so forth. So proprietary lines, we've had them for a number of years. Right now with supply chain, like everything else, it's been a bit of a challenge to come in. But when we do have that product, okay. our dealers eat it up. Tube Tech. Tube Tech stands. Stands, so, okay. Proprietary stand line. Um, entry level, beginner level, but it definitely meets a price point that a lot of dealers appreciate. So yeah, it's a good line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. Um, and man, anything else? Anything else about the company that uh, you'd like to touch on? I guess for dealers listening, um, LPD, family owned, but we're independent distribution, yeah. right? And looking at the state of the industry now, you have great competitors of ours. I mean, everyone, we do business with a lot of them. I mean, there's no, no, these guys are good for this reason or bad for this reason. That's not what this conversation's about. Sure. But when you're looking at another option for another distributor, uh, we are a full line distributor. We've been around since 63. We've been in the same place in Detroit for a number of years. We're not going anywhere. And, yeah. uh, when you call LPD, you're going to get somebody on the phone. If you prefer to go online and order through the dealer portal, you're going to be able to do that. So we're really, really trying to change the way that independent distribution is done and make sure that it is just a seamless, user-friendly process. You want to get on the phone and talk to somebody, the phone rings two times, somebody's going to pick up. Yeah. You don't want to go that way. You want to email and order. And we just want to make sure it's really accessible for everybody. Yeah, very cool. And you guys are uh, located in Michigan? Yes, it's about 20 minutes north of Detroit. 20 minutes north of Detroit. So uh, have you always lived in Michigan? I have. You have? have? Yes. So that's interesting because I actually grew up in Columbus, Ohio. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. It now begins. <laughs> Are you a Michigan fan? I am. You're a Michigan fan? I am. Maze and how, blue. How, how have you been able to live with yourself for the last uh, 11 years? Listen, they will rise again. <laughs> the, big, the big house will rise again, and, it, and we will smoke Ohio State at some point. At some point. When that happens, I don't know. But. So, um, um, darn it, what's the name of the coach for Michigan? I always forget his name. Oh, Jim Harbaugh? Uh, oh, Jim Harbaugh. That's yeah. right. Yeah, Jim yeah. Harbaugh. So it's so easy to forget his name. Yeah. Man, man yeah. they just signed a new big contract with that guy. You I think know. He's, you think he's going to turn around? He's been there, what, seven seven years now? Uh, you know. You think he's going to turn it around? I mean, it's been, I think, the last time I looked, which was this morning, it's been 3,518 days <laughs> you pulled since, that Michigan, for this yeah, since Michigan's beat Ohio State. So, I, you know, I just thought, you know, you know, hey, if you're – you're signing a coach for Michigan. Their one job is to try to beat Ohio State, and it just hasn't happened. Yes, you know, I think to that comment, um, <laughs> is Jim Harbaugh the, the guy? Yeah. We've had a lot of years to find out, and yeah. he hasn't been the guy yet. So yeah. the pants. It's crossed. the pants. Maybe if he didn't wear the khaki That's pants true. anymore. Change of jeans, maybe. Put jeans yes. or a different color, uh, you know, like uh, Chino or something, That's it. you know. You're right. You know, I think maybe that would be it. That so. is a deciding factor. We're yeah. going to smoke Ohio State you with know, a pair of jeans on. One of my favorite Jim Harbaugh moments is, is when, when Ohio State was uh, killing him uh, two years ago because Michigan bailed on playing him last year. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, is uh, two years ago when it came, it was it was a close game. I, I think we only won by like 28 or something like that. And uh, Harbaugh turned around and I think did he throw his clipboard? Yes. And then he got th he got a penalty because it got thrown it got thrown out on the field. <laughs> yeah. It was just it was a great moment. I just thought, you know, you know, it was a. Uh, I could see you appreciating that. How about that? <laughs> I, I would appreciate it if I was on the other sideline yeah, as well. Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, yes. I'm looking forward to it this year. And, and to be quite honest with you. Um, the high state Michigan rivalry is just, it, you want it to be there. So yes. I, I'm looking forward to the days where it's great games, really close, and, you know, a lot of sportsmanship and everything like that. So I love the Big Ten. Yes. I think the Big Ten needs to continue to make a good presence in college football, so I'm all for it. So. Well, just to clear it up, because you had the gentleman on here from Music Around, which was a great episode, by the way. Oh. But he made the comment of, you know, oh, yeah, the folks in Columbus, they, they can't stand Ann Arbor, but the folks in Ann Arbor, oh, they're okay. You know, they're not really. That's a lie. Listen, <laughs> they hate everybody the in Col Arbor <laughs> can't stand anybody in Columbus who wears anything <laughs> red anything ohio state no that's not hey, well by the way it's scarlet it's not red scarlet well i'm, I'm gonna call it red anyway because i seem to trigger an emotion with you, you that's ohio like, state uh, no. <laughs> yeah. anyway evan it's a pleasure to meet you, yes, you as have well. you on the show so lpd music man i hope you guys have a great rest of the year yes and thank you just continuing to keep riding the wave and um 
Yeah, appreciate you a ton. No, I appreciate you having me on the show and uh, looking forward to working with you guys more in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, right. thanks. Thank thanks you. for listening to the Music Retail Show. 